the book of Revelation chapter number 12 and I shall begin the reading of the Word of God at verse number 10 the book of Revelation chapter 12 and I shall begin the reading of the Word of God at verse 10 when you are there say I am there and the word of the Lord reads then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ the power of his anointed one and his anointing have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down verse 11 and they overcame him they the redeemed overcame him this accuser that has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death I'm gonna read it again and then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now will somebody shout now, now. shout it out loud now. now now he says salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death I want to just talk for a few minutes and I want to speak in this realm now uh, I'm not going to be able to deal with all of this so the Spirit of God instructed me just to hit on one thing tonight but what we see here in the book of Revelation chapter 10 uh, is the tools of the overcomer or what the overcomer uses to actually overcome the scripture says and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death so there is articulated there three key elements or weapons that the overcomer must use to overcome now I remind you that first John tells us that that which is born of God overcomes this world and this is the victory that overcomes this world even our faith would you touch two people and just say these words to them you are supposed to be overcoming tell them that now ultimately overcoming implies and presupposes that there will be some obstacle or impediment that you have to deal with so in the fact that God calls you an overcomer you and I should not be surprised that there are obstacles and impediments in our way because you cannot be an overcomer unless you have something to come over so, so the key element now uh, of your and my faith fight and the key impediment the Spirit of God began to impress on me is never the obstacle. Whatever you are facing, the obstacle is not the thing that is keeping you from progressing forward no matter how big it is no matter how small it is no matter how long uh, it's been there look at your neighbor and tell them your obstacle is not your problem tell them that's not the problem the problem is that many of us do not know how to faithfully execute or employ our weaponry to defeat our obstacle or impediment and so here in the book of Revelation, uh, we key in, and I really just want to deal with one of them tonight, and that is this second one, the word of our testimony. He said, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony look at your neighbor and say what is the word of your testimony what, what is it? Uh, now look at somebody else just tell them, what, what's the word man what is it what's the word what's the word Now, whenever I, I preach or teach 
from the book of Revelation, I, I, I always uh, like to start by, uh, by giving people some insight into this book of Revelation because uh, the book of Revelation has been erroneously ministered from and preached and so many people feel and sense that the book of Revelation is only a book about uh, apocalyptic or eschatological things or things to come and many of the Revelation teachers and the Revelation seminars and the things that are, are articulated from the book of Revelation only deal with future events but if you read the book of Revelation the first chapter of the book of Revelation we find that the book of Revelation this is not the revelation of John it is the revelation of Jesus Christ now uh, stay with me now if you go to chapter 1 and verse number 1 it says the revelation of Jesus Christ or the uncovering or the disclosure of Jesus Christ or Jesus the anointed one and his anointing now watch me because everything in the book of Revelation is not for some future time some of it is for right now and even in the declaration that I read to you, are you listening here? Even in the declaration that I read to you, it says, now is salvation come. Are you still here? So we see, first of all, in chapter 1 uh, 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 and verse 1, it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not the revelation of John the Revelator. It's not the revelation of apocalyptic things. It's not the revelation of eschatological or future things. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, if you go on down in verse number one and uh, in, in chapter one and verse eight, you find that Jesus Christ now speaks and he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Are you still here? Says the Lord, watch this, who is and was and is to come. Now, stay with me. If this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is he who is and was and is to come then when you're reading the book of Revelation sometimes you're reading is sometimes you're reading was and sometimes you're reading is to come and you've got to have the spirit of discernment to know whether you're reading was is or is to come this is why the scripture says blessed is he that readeth and understandeth this because you need a spirit of insight and wisdom and revelation to facet this book because it switches from was to is to is to come and sometimes in the same chapter you'll be reading is and then in the next couple verses you'll be reading was and in the next few verses you'll be reading is to come and then it'll go back to was and then over to is Are, are, are you still here? Now the passage I just read to you, look at your neighbor and tell him, is an is passage. It's, a, it's not an is to come passage. In other words, you're not supposed to be overcoming in heaven. There's nothing to overcome there. Are you still here? You know, people tell me, well, I will really be able to beat the devil in heaven. What do you need to beat him there? He ain't there. Are you still here? Child, once I get to heaven, it, it'll be all, you're right, it will be all over because ain't nothing to fight there. And if you're going to have victory and if you're going to overcome, you got to learn how to employ those weapons here. Touch your neighbor, say, I got that, let's go deeper. Now, 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 now the first thing he says here, as he looks, he begins to tell them they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of the Lamb, uh, we understand. I won't preach on that tonight, but it suffice it to say that the way you get into this uh, spirit of the overcomer and the way you begin to have authority and access over the enemy is you must be born again. You, you have to be born again. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and the Spirit of God has to come into your spirit and empower you to walk in victory when Jesus said in essence to Nicodemus you must be born again the literal translation is you must be born from above you need something higher than yourself 
You will never be able to defeat the devil if you understand Christology and the order of spiritual hierarchy. You understand uh, that God created man above angels. Are you still here? Uh, 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 now the scripture says thou has created him a little lower than the angels but that is an inaccurate translation of the original Hebrew it actually reads there thou has created him a little lower than Elohim well, study it in your, in, in your, in your Hebrew lexicon you, you'll find it uh, God, God created man spiritually above angels now when Adam bowed his knee to Lucifer a fallen angel he submitted his authority to that of angelic beings are you still here you say why are you going this way this is this is important and so when Adam submitted himself to Lucifer he came under the authority of a fallen angel he was never supposed to be under that authority he had the authority over Lucifer I wish I had time to preach this like I really feel this some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy which is why watch me now which is why uh, that that only when you are born again are you restored to a place of authority over angels for the Bible says that because Jesus Christ defeated powers and principalities and made a show of them openly God has exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every nation should bow and every tongue should confess of things in earth on earth and under the earth that he is Lord to the glory of God are you still here now the book of Ephesians tells me that he has been he has been raised above uh, high, high above all power principality throne and dominion and every name that is named the book of Ephesians chapter 2 tells me that you and I have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if I have been seated in him and he is above power and principality, then I got to be above him too. And so only redeemed man has power over angelic hosts Christless man does not have power over angels and because Lucifer is a fallen angel if you are not born again he has power over you so the first element of access or entree into this overcoming spirit is you must be born again because once the blood has been applied to your life and your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, you are then spiritually seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and you have the power to use his name. Touch two people and tell them, I got power to use the name. I, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that the whole family in heaven and earth has his name. I wish I had somebody... Look at your name and say, I have power to use the name. I have. Uh, and the Bible records uh, that the demons and devils understand and know who has this power. Which is why when Jesus sent the disciples out in Luke chapter 10 and they came back and they said, listen, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Rejoice that your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life because it's your name written there that gives you the power what this tells me is that there is a divine record of who has this power and who does not God is a good bookkeeper he keeps his accounts real well and if your name is not written in that book you are not authorized to use the name of Jesus we see this demonstrated in Acts chapter 19 where the Bible says seven sons of a man by the name of Siva tried to cast out a devil because they had seen Paul do it. And they said, we adjure you by the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. And the Bible says the devil whipped them and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but I don't see your name here. Touch two people say you better get your name written down. You, 
You, you can chant all you want. You can rub rosary beads. You can rub Buddha's belly. You can do anything you want to do. But there is no other name given under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Can I preach the gospel in here just a minute? Touch your neighbor and tell them there's power in that. And look at your neighbor saying, I'm authorized to use the name. I, I've been deputized to use the name. I'm legally accessed. So touch your neighbor and say, you, you got to have that if you're going to overcome it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not even a fight. So you're born again. But then he moves to this second one here and he says they overcame by the blood of the lamb but then they overcame by the word of their testimony and this testimony element here is something that the spirit of god said i want you to study out and make clear because i want to show you some things about this because the body of christ erroneously has misconstrued this scripture to uh, uh, to indoctrinate and cause people to believe that when it says they overcame by the word of their testimony we have interpreted that to mean testifying and so whole denominations and movements incorporated a thing in their services called testimony service because of a misapplication and misappropriation of this scripture. And so they would have a testimony service and various ones would get up and testify. Don't look at me that way. Some of you came out of churches with testimony service. Nothing wrong with testimonies. Testimony is a good thing. If God has done something for you, you ought to tell it. But that's not the thing that causes you to overcome. That's something that has already been overcome. Oh, you sit here. So there would be testimony service. You remember testimony service. Someone would get up, first of all, giving honor to God and to the saints and to Bishop so-and-so in his absence. Do give praise, glory, and honor to God. Thank you, praise God for my health. Thank you, praise God for my strength. Help, thank you, praise. I used to think thank you, praise was a word. Thank you, praise. Thank you. Th I didn't know what. The, thank you, praise God for my health. Thank you, praise God for my strength. Thank you, praise God. And then they go on to talk about something that has happened. And then they would say, I wish you praise. I, I want you saints to pray for me. For I do want to live uh, right in these last and evil days. I thank God that I'm born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that with a burning fire. Touching there's a testimony service. You remember? Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Testimony service. But there would be the testimony service. And the testimony service was placed in the service because this scripture was applied as one of the things. But I want you to understand that that is not what this scripture means when it says they overcame by the word of their testimony. There is a companion scripture here that must be understood if we're going to understand this passage in its proper context. And that is over in Revelation chapter 19. So turn over there. Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation chapter 19. John is writing again and he here is being taken on a tour of heavenly and spiritual things by an angelic tour guide. An angel is showing him things in the spirit realm and in the spirit dimension. The things are so majestic and so glorious that John is physically and emotionally overcome by the majesty of what he sees and so in verse number 10 he writes and he says i fell at his feet to worship him but he that is the angel said to me see that you do not do that now watch this this is an angel talking i am your fellow servant that tells me something about how angels see themselves in relation to us you shouldn't have your mind blown by angels so what if an angel appears that ain't no big thing angels are amazed at me you, you, you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't hear what I just said we got people. when I saw an angel an angel showed up in my house angels so, so what angels I'm not surprised when angels show up angels are amazed at me 
You say, how can you say that? Because I can read. The Bible says one angel looked at another angel in one place and said, what is man that God is mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. I blow angels' minds. I blow their minds because God redeemed me and not them. You didn't hear what I just said. When Lucifer fell, there was no redemption for him. But when Adam fell, God said, I can't let that one go. I can't let him go. I got to get him back. Touch your neighbor say he's, he'll be finished in a minute. So... So watch me now. So, so, so watch me now. The angel, when John bows, thank you, Holy Ghost. When John bows to worship him, the angel says, 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 don't do that. I am your fellow servant. I'm in this thing with you. Watch this. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. I want you to get it. The angel calls himself a brother of yours. Nah, I, don't have, I, don't have, I don't have time to deal with that but remember that God is called the father of spirits and angels are angelic spirits and man is created in the image and the likeness of God the real you is not flesh the real you is the spirit so the angels look at you and call you brother because you're made of the same kind of stuff and have the same kind of connection and if you understood the kind of authority you have in their realm you would dispatch them and put them to work the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that you and I have not come to Mount Zion or to the flesh, but we have come to the heavenly city and to an innumerable company of angels. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 says, What are angels? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us? Who are the heirs of salvation? Matthew chapter 13 tells me that the angels are the reapers. Their job is to go get my stuff. So if you got stuff you haven't been seeing come to pass, what you need to do is stop running around town yourself and put your angels on assignment and tell them I got a harvest coming and I command you, go get my money. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, so watch this. I, I got a point to make here. The angel, the angel says, I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. Watch this, watch this. The angel says, I am your fellow servant and, have your, and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. let me deal with this just a moment the angel says don't worship me I'm one of your brothers who have the testimony and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy so now over in Revelation 12 it says and they overcame him the accuser by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony get it the angel says i am one of your brothers who have the testimony <laughs> and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony the angel says i am one of your brothers who has the testimony so the testimony that we have is the same testimony that they have. Now let's go a little deeper. Look at your neighbor and say it's the same testimony. It's the same, it's the same. No, 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 you're not, you're not with me yet. Look at your neighbor and say it's the same testimony. Now, now we have to understand this word testimony. Because this word testimony here is a judicial word. It's a legal word. It is the Greek word marturia. It is the same Greek word that is translated from Greek into English, witness. 
when Jesus said and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me the word he uses in Greek is the same word martyria from which we get the English word martyr now English has translated martyrs as someone who dies but a martyr is not someone who dies. A martyr is someone who has evidence. The word actually means to have evidence. And a martyr dies as evidence that what he has, he believes in so much. He is unwilling to part with it because he believes it. So rather than surrender it, he dies for it. Uh, that's what makes a martyr a martyr the death is not what makes you a martyr it's the evidence uh, are you still here touch your name and ask me it's about evidence it's, uh, so, so now this word mar martyrium this word testimony here it's a judicial word and it literally means a judicial report a record or legal evidence this word is a companion to the the Jewish to, to the judicial system on which we even practice law today there is a period in a legal process called the discovery period any lawyers in here will understand what I'm saying the discovery period is when evidence is being gathered stay with me now and each side has an opportunity to gather evidence in that period this period of discovery each side has to share the evidence they have with the other side if the evidence is not shared with the other side then the judge renders that evidence inadmissible evidence stay with me if, if, if it's not shared and so watch this there is a legal criteria upon which evidence is admissible or inadmissible in a court of law in other words you can't just use evidence because you have it it, it it has to be rendered watch this admissible by the judge because you're playing according to the rules now the problem with the devil is he is an outlaw he doesn't play fair he doesn't play according to the rules and his job is to gather evidence against you and I in order to accuse us which is why the book of Revelation calls him the accuser because he gathers evidence with which to defeat you and discourage you and remind you of what you used to be and what you used to do and why what you're believing for is not going to come to pass in your life because you used to do this and you used to be that and you did this last week and you did that last night and you blew it again the problem is that the evidence that he is using has been rendered I got some people coming my way now I got I got some people coming my way now I got some people coming my way well, the evidence that he is using has been rendered inadmissible in the court of heaven so in the trial of your faith I, I, I feel my help in the house now in the trial of your faith you've got to learn how to deal with inadmissible evidence it is the enemy's job to accuse you touch your neighbor and say that's his job he's going to do it it's his job to bring up your past it's his job to bring up why things won't work out for you but what you have to do is remind him that the blood of Jesus has rendered his evidence touch two people say inadmissible inadmissible you, can, you, you can't use that and it doesn't matter have you ever noticed that even when people are telling a lie the more they tell it the more they believe it and if you sit there and listen to them 
if you sit there and listen to them lie a liar can convince you if you listen to him long enough that what he's saying is the truth uh, look at your neighbor and say, this is how the devil works. He, he wants to keep bringing evidence against you from your past. And if you let him lie to you. Long enough, he will convince you that his lie is the truth. Watch this. So you say, Bishop McClendon, uh, uh, w w what is the determining factor? W watch this now. Any accusation that attempts to discredit or negate what the blood of Jesus has done for you, touch your neighbor's say, inadmissible evidence. Any Anything that the enemy tries to say to you, to tell you about yourself that does not line up with what Jesus has done by the blood, look at your neighbors and say, inadmissible. Uh, you, you, you're not getting me yet. See, what you've got to understand is inadmissible evidence is evidence that the judge is not paying attention to. Okay, let me work here. Let me work. Let me work. Let me work. See, you're hearing it, but he's not paying it any attention. The problem is, if you hear it long enough, you will start saying it. Let me go just a little deeper here. I'm almost finished. In a court of law, both the prosecutor and the defense attorney has the opportunity to present evidence to support their case. But in the final analysis, the judgment is not rendered simply on the evidence. It is rendered ultimately on the testimony of the witnesses. Ugh. So somebody may have evidence against you, but if your testimony doesn't line up with their evidence, I feel my help in the house now. But look at your neighbor and say that the evidence is not what settles the issue. Uh, in other words, people can talk all day long. The devil can speak all day long. Your enemies can talk all day long, but it's not the evidence. Look at your neighbor and say, it's the witness and the testimony of the witness. So, 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 so now wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So, so anything that lines up with what God's word has said about me is admissible evidence. So watch this, in the trial of my faith, no matter what it is, I'm believing God for my healing. I'm believing God for my deliverance. I'm believing God to meet my need. I'm believing God to save my child. I'm believing God to restore my husband. I'm believing God to bring my boy out of jail who was convicted wrongly. The evidence is mounting against him and the enemy is accusing him and accusing me before God. The evidence is mounting and the evidence is stacking up and yet the rendering is not based upon that evidence. God has said, I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head only and not the tail. I'm supposed to lend and not borrow. God has said by his stripes, I am healed. God has said a thousand may fall at my side. And 10,000 at my right. But it will not come near. Will not come near me. So I've got a prosecuting attorney who is rendering evidence and I've got a defense attorney he's called my advocate Jesus the righteous 
and Jesus is at the right hand of God reminding God of what his blood has done for me uh, touch your neighbor's hand and say we're almost done here but the Bible says that the testimony of two witnesses is the truth so it's not enough for me to have an advocate in heaven I've got to be saying on earth what my advocate is saying in heaven look at your neighbors and that makes two witnesses I got Jesus telling the father I'm healed and then I'm down here telling the father I'm healed I got Jesus telling the father my need is met and then I'm down here telling the father my my need is met. I got Jesus telling the Father he's on his way out of this. And I'm down here telling the Father I'm on my way out of this. Look at your neighbor say two witnesses. Now he says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is to foretell before it happened what's going to happen. So now the word of my testimony is when I take the evidence When I take the evidence now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen so I open my Bible and regardless of my situation I begin to repeat the evidence but I don't just quote it I start prophesying it before it happens look at your neighbor tell him I'm about to do this and I want you to watch me because if you do like I do you'll start receiving what I receive I begin to stand and tell the devil I know what you said but let me tell you what's going to happen in my situation I'm gonna go to the doctor and the doctor's gonna scratch his head look at your neighbor say prophesy prophesy look at your neighbor say don't be afraid to prophesy See, when you got the word on it, you need to start opening your mouth and prophesying your future. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell him, neighbor, let me tell you what's about to happen in your life. A thousand are going to fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it's not coming near you. Say, neighbor, let me tell you what's about to happen in your life. God is not only going to save you, he's going to save your whole household. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, let me tell you what's about to happen in your life. The Bible says that my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor let me tell you what's about to happen in my life I'm coming out of this my bills will be paid in 30 days six months from now I'm gonna be in a whole nother situation look at your neighbor say neighbor let me tell you in the name of Jesus what's about to happen in your life you're gonna be the head and not the tail you're gonna be above and not beneath you're gonna walk in the blessing of God can I say this to somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor by this time next year they won't even be able to recognize you look at your neighbor say neighbor I feel the Holy Ghost in here you're coming out of this and you're coming out strong is there anybody here that believes God still has the power to bring you out grab your neighbor's hand and say prophesy prophesy lift up your voice and release the word of your testimony what did God say come on look at
at your neighbor and say, what did God say he's going to do for you? What did he promise you were going to have? What did he tell you? I need the spirit of prophecy. Lay your hands on somebody. Tell them now in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop belly aching, stop crying, stop boo-hooing, and start prophesying. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I feel a move in the building. I need somebody who understands what God is saying. I want you to go to two people right now and just tell them something good that God's word says is going to happen. Just tell them right now. Go to them. Tell them. You're coming out of this. The doctor's report is going to change. The people who denied you are going to change their mind. The people who told you no are going to tell you yes. Yes! 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 Some of you got it now. Go find somebody else who looks like they need encouragement and tell them in the name of Jesus, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. The burden shall be right. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm telling you, I'm coming out of this and I'll be out in a few days, in a few weeks, about 90 days from... My God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I need somebody to go to somebody. Tell them it'll never be like this again. You'll never see that devil again. You'll never be that broke again. You'll never be that depressed again. You'll never be that bad. That... I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it in the name of Jesus. Fresh, fresh, fresh. 
your hands on somebody now. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's what to do right now. That's what to do. Uh-huh. Your hands are on somebody now. That's him. That's him. That's him. Flowing it. That's him. That's him. That's him. If it's coming up out of your being, yeah, 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 yeah. Lose it. Let it go. is removed the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing the scripture says and it shall come to pass in that day <laughs> That his yoke shall be removed from off thy neck. Devil shut up. And his burden shall be removed from off your shoulders. And the yoke shall be destroyed. Cause of the anointing. Your hands are on someone right now. Follow me, children. Your hands are on someone right now. The Bible says that one day the angel of the Lord came to visit a man by the name of Zechariah. When he was serving in his order in the priesthood, he was the husband of a woman named Elizabeth. The Bible says that they had been believing God for a child for many years and one day the angel of the Lord came to him and said, your prayer has been heard. And you're going to bring forth and your wife Elizabeth is going to conceive and you're going to have a boy and you're going to call his name John the Bible says that Zechariah although he had prayed he looked and he said how shall I know this the Bible says the angel said oh it's surely going to happen but because you have not believed the word of the Lord you shall be mute until the day it happens why because for God to do on on earth what he wants to do from heaven he's got to have somebody down here 
that will say down here what he has said up there and so God basically said to Zacharias since you won't talk like I need you to talk you're not gonna be able to talk at all the Bible says the boy came and when they came to sanctify him and circumcise him according to the order of the custom they came and they said what is the boy's name they came to Elizabeth because everybody knew Zacharias couldn't talk she said his name shall be called John they said look ain't nobody in your family named John he's supposed to be named Zacharias is your firstborn son he's supposed to have the name of the father you ain't got no Johns in your family and the Bible says then they started making signs to Zacharias he said bring me a tablet and they asked him what should his name be the Bible says Zacharias wrote down J O H N and the moment he wrote it the Bible says his tongue was loosed and he began to speak because when he started saying on earth what God had said from heaven the power of God loosed him to be able to speak it lay your hands on your neighbor and tell them there's a miracle in your mouth if you will stop listening to that accuser his evidence is inadmissible I've been teaching my congregation all you got to do is get five smooth stones David brought five smooth stones to beat Goliath and he only had to use one you get five promises from God's Word that promise you what you're believing for and you don't let anything or anybody get you off that word and no matter what the accuser says you no, know you don't you're, you're, devil it is written your hair yeah God your hands are laid on somebody now father in the name of Jesus you sent me here tonight with an anointing to break the power of a yoke and a bondage that has inhibited your people from receiving what it is that you have promised them individually and collectively and so tonight in the name of Jesus of Nazareth I defy that thing that is defying you I come against the obstacle and the impediment I tell the accuser all of his words are lies and all of his evidence is inadmissible and in the name of Jesus if you will begin to prophesy the word of your testimony the evidence that you have been given Lord Jesus your hands are laid on someone I loose provision healing deliverance liberty freedom I command money to come <laughs> from the north south east and west I release the angels to go get your stuff you don't have to run around all over town to try to make sure it's happening you can stand right there in your bedroom with your hands up your Bible open and God's Word in your mouth lay your hands on yourself father I have obeyed you and I thank you for the anointing of deliverance and freedom that your people have received your word and now as we act upon that word I thank you for miracles notable miracles supernatural breakthroughs inexplicable manifestations I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs and wonders and I thank you your hands are laid upon yourself bow your heads 
sure as I stand here the Spirit of God sent me here with an anointing tonight and a word to deliver there is a fresh start there is a new beginning there is the breaking of a bondage of old there is the tearing asunder of the yoke that has held you some of you for months some of you for days some of you you've been in a depression and a funk like for months and you're like I just can't seem to get going that's over he that has ears to hear let him hear if you will receive it that's over tonight your hands are laid up on yourself the anointing of God that is on my life is to help people get in touch with the supernatural element of God's power I carry it into a room with me not because I'm special because I'm chosen and so are you my assignment tonight has been to dispense it it is now on you lay your hands on yourself and I say to you in the name of Jesus you have authority tonight to go back home and start declaring what's going to happen in your house some of you need to pick up your pocketbook and tell it let me tell you what's about to happen to you and you say Bishop that sounds crazy yeah it does it looks crazy Jesus looked crazy for a minute talking to a fig tree till they came back the next day and exactly what he said had come to pass come on look at your neighbor and tell them they're gonna stop laughing when it comes to pass Lay your hands on yourself. I want every person in this.